Hi everyone and welcome back to Interview Chronicles Season 3. Today we are in the 40th episode of the series and we have Anubhav here with us who has been recently placed at BNY Mellon as a part of his campus placements at VIT. He is here to share his interview experience with us. Now before we talk to him, let's look at the eligibility criteria. So all students belonging to the computer science, IT and EC backgrounds were eligible provided they had a CGP of 7 or 70% in their 10th and 12th and a 7.5 or a 75% in their pursuing degree with no standing arrears. Now let's go ahead and talk to Anubhav and understand his experience interviewing for this company. Hi Anubhav, firstly welcome to my channel and congratulations on your placement. And Hi Jishnu, thank yeah. you for inviting me. Yeah. So, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yeah, so my name is Anubhav Chachra. I am from Faridabad in Haryana. And currently, I am pursuing uh, B.Tech in Information Technology from VIT Bello. And I have been recently placed at the environment. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Uh, you can now tell us about the placement process, like how many rounds were there and what they comprised of. Sure. So, the this company, BNY Mellon or Bank of New York Mellon, so it is a basically a global financial services uh, bank and it caters to MNCs, uh, customers and, you know, corporations in general. So this company came to our college in mid of August and they had a, like, they, the total uh, procedure of this placement consisted of four rounds. Okay. First, there was a online coding test. Then there was uh, three te three uh, interviews. Okay. So basically, uh, for when we applied for the when we applied for the this uh, company, after a week or something, the applied list arrived for the online test. Hmm. Means the people who were eligible for the test. So around thirty eight hundred students gave this test, uh, comprising of all the campuses of VIT. Hmm. So the online coding test, uh, the duration of it was two hours, and it consisted of four coding problems, and it was held on Hacker Earth. Hmm. So in the four coding problems, one was an easy problem, two were medium, and one was a hard problem. I'm like this easy, medium, hard. I'm uh, mentioning regarding the latitude status. So these were the uh, type of problems. And after that, uh, the next day we received a shortlist, and out of these 3,800 students, are a total of 34 students were selected for interview process. Okay. And the interviews were scheduled the next day. Hmm. So the next day the interview started, the first round was a technical round. And it was, for me, it was taken by a senior backend engineer at BNY, hmm. who had around 11 years of experience. So the interview started with a basic introduction about myself. And they asked me about my prior internship experiences, uh, the tech stacks that I, have, that I had used, and also the reason like behind using uh, certain tags in some of my projects and all. So okay. these were the like type of questions that they were asking me straight out of my resume. Hmm. Then after that, the uh, in interview started asking me about some data structures. They were not uh, problem solving questions, but rather theoretical and application based questions like how would you apply certain data structures to solve problems, their hmm. real life applications. Yeah. And after that, uh, they shifted to uh, asking me questions about SQL. So they had given me a uh, question which I had to uh, solve using an SQL query. Hmm. And this led to a discussion of object-oriented programming after that. And in that, they asked me some of the concepts like runtime polymorphism and you know also the disadvantage of using OOPs and what are the other uh, programming paradigms that are available. Yeah. So after that, they discussed with me design principles also like uh, single singleton design principle, abstract factory design principle, hmm. etc. So once this was done, the interviewer then shared with me a code pair link of Hacker, and in that there was a uh, there was a question, a problem that I had to solve. So it was basically. Uh, I had to implement a comparator class which had around four to five methods hmm. and we, I just had to, like the skeleton was already provided, I just had to write the code inside it hmm. and it was a fairly easy problem. Okay. So all the test cases for that uh, problem passed and the interviewer was happy hmm. and the, that's when the interview ended hmm. and after around 30 minutes I received the uh, call for second round. Hmm. So a second round was also uh, fully technical round but it was more sort of a discussion about tech hmm. so this interview was taken by uh, the one of the like it was taken by the director of platform engineering at bny so he had around 20 years of experience okay. and they were 
they started the discussion with uh, you know with my uh, feedback about my previous interview and how was my experience hmm. and then the interview started looking through my resume and they asked me questions related to docker containerizations hmm. because i had mentioned that in my resume hmm. so it was a very in depth discussion which lasted around 20 25 minutes okay. and they asked me uh, questions related to docker containerization hmm. then it shifted to cloud as well so everything was like uh, focused about my resume only okay. and little little they like started to you know like uh, st- uh, divert the topics to some other things hmm. like they are, like i had a background in android development so they asked me about uh, other you know other type of development uh, technologies that i have worked with like web development hmm. and all and after that they also asked me about uh, cross platform application developments like if i have used any frameworks and all and all of that thing after yeah. that like they had a debate with me regarding chat gpt and generative ai and mm. how it's affecting software engineering right now mm. so i knew that like whatever side i will take the interview will take the opposite end of mm. it and i had to discuss mm. so that was a very intriguing and very informative discussion also mm. so that's how the interviewer was interview concluded okay. and lastly i asked him uh, i asked the interviewer the a uh, few questions also i asked him about the role he is currently in what type of challenges do does they uh, do they have okay. at mm-hmm. the position that they are working mm. and once this was done and the interview ended and this also lasted around 45 to 50 minutes okay after that i was called for the third round which was the final round and it was a mix of technical and hr so the interview uh, started with a basic conversation about my hobbies my college life etc mm. and also the uh, feedback of the previous interviews okay after that uh, given my uh, background in android uh, android development mm. they asked me questions related to kotlin java uh, coroutines android life cycles etc right and then they shifted the questions towards c++ mm. as i had mentioned in my resume that uh, in under languages so they asked me questions related to c++ in depth questions related to how c++ works uh, comparison with c memory mm. allocation mechanisms okay. and stack and heap memory mm. and then they started uh, mixing the two they started asking me memory leaks in apps like in android mm. apps compared to memory leaks in c++ so mm. how how do we tackle those and all mm. so this was a very informative discussion as well after that uh, they asked me questions related to database as well okay. like uh, sharding indexing and uh, normalization etc hmm. so all of this was very theoretical and very informative for me as well right. after that finally they presented me with the puzzle hmm. so it was a basic uh, puzzle from gfg hmm. and uh, i i took some time to solve it they also gave me some hint hmm. and then i was able to solve it properly hmm. and after that they asked me if i had any questions and then i asked them about their experience with bn by melon and hmm. like Uh, like similar to that like how what is your role and like how do you deal with all the challenges that you face and all right. so they happily answered that mm. and this round also lasted around 1 hour mm. and ultimately like uh, like the the obvious thing was that they asked me at the end some hr related questions like location preferences mm. and uh, like why do you want to join the company mm. etc mm. what are your expectations and all so all of my uh, rounds happened on the same day i it got over by 7 pm hmm. and around 8:30 i we received the results and around and total 14 students were selected out of 34 and i was fortunate to be among one of them so that was my experience with the the environment okay okay that's great congratulations again and thank you thank you for sharing your experience um do you have any suggestions for your juniors or for anybody who wants to get into a good company yeah sure so i have two sets of instruction like ba- uh, suggestions so basically one is for preparing for the interviews and then the second is for actually like how to how do you want to uh, give the interview hmm. so pre- preparation everyone knows like dsa and uh, core subjects are really important hmm. so if you uh, like these are the things which you should like should master at some point of time yeah. and these are very much required for clearing the interviews hmm. dsa i say because every company has a coding test uh, for their shortlisting for their initial shortlisting and hmm. for that you need to have your dsa uh, right. dsa uh, you have a strong hold on dsa hmm. if you have time if you have like 
uh, like if you are a very on a crunch like you have only 3 or 2 months left mm. before placements mm. then you should just strictly focus on dsa because it will help you to clear the os mm. but if you have a lot of time you can also delve into competitive programming because once you get at a certain level at that you can easily crack the uh, online assessments right. of mm. all the companies mm. like it's a piece of cake then after that uh, uh, keeping aside dsa and uh, this uh, course subjects you should you should also have a strong hold on at least one of uh, development uh, tech stack it can either be android development it can be machine learning web development anything like that mm. and to showcase that in your resume uh, internship experience i would say matters more than having a you know good project like if you have decent project in your resume you can and not a bit not very great projects you can compensate that by having some internship experiences mm. and now you can like now it's very easy to get uh, remote internships if you like if you want something like a react front end in, intern okay. uh, role you want you can get those easily mm. so internship experience is very important mm. because i feel uh, either your internship experiences or your projects these are what drives the conversation of an interview mm. and you want to keep it uh, at a place you want the interviewer to lead at the place where you are comfortable okay. so if in internship you have done the entire work by yourself you have contributed you get things to say rather than compare to a decent project which you might have uh, taken help from youtube or right. maybe it was a group project mm-hmm. and all so you don't want to tread in those waters right. so it's better to have an internship experience and other than that uh, i mentioned about dsa cp projects and all other than that it's uh, like if you have a if you have a development tech stack that you have mastered mm. you should also have some other technologies that are not you know people do not uh, learn uh, uh, as a fresher mm. so for example everyone knows about uh, development uh, front end development android development ml blockchain is also catching up so you should also have knowledge about other things like cloud also mm. devops also mm. so these are very added things which you know make you appear more as a complete candidate mm. rather than just having fixated up on one tech stack mm. so i think that will really help yeah. now my other suggestions for the how to like in in the interview how to how do you have to behave and how do you have to perform mm. so most important thing is thinking out loud in the interview mm. so when you are giving interview whatever the question is there whatever they have asked whatever is going through your head like you should be you should be speaking that out loud mm. so it shows the interviewer that you are actively thinking and you are uh, trying to solve the problem rather than trying to you know find the solution that was once crammed in your head right. so that's not going to help so it's mm. better to think out loud okay other thing is asking clarifying questions to the interviewers mm. so like if you are giving an interview and you are stuck somewhere or you don't understand the question mm. it's better to ask the interviewer and rather than assuming yourself because most of the time the interviewers are really patient and also helpful and they guide you if they see you like you have understood the question mm. wrong or something mm. like that mm. so it's important to ask clarifying questions and finally i would say before an interview it's very important to learn something about the company gather some information about the ceo the founders mm. what are the core values that the company is operates on right. and any achievements that the company have done so all these things are very important to understand what like for what company you are applying and for like what can be the questions if it's possible if you know who are your interviewers also before the round then also it's very like advisable to go through their linkedin and understand what is the background like what do they work upon to understand like what can be asked to you so yeah these are my like a few suggestions that anyone like who is watching this can take and because i i these are not suggestions like these are the suggestions that i uh, learned myself by experience so hmm. i had given i had given before this uh, BN, before getting selected in bn i had given 11 interviews campus interviews before okay. that so like this is all like what i have learned through my own experience hmm. and that's what i'm saying like you should focus on and don't just get like don't like most important thing out of all is being confident honest and having a positive outlook right. other than that it's like other than that your preparation will speak for itself that's it okay okay yeah. thank you so much and uh, thank you for sharing your experience and for the suggestions i'm sure it's going to help many people yes. and yeah thank you so much thank thank you jishnu for having me thank you say thank you for watching all my videos and giving me so much support so i hope uh, these videos are really helpful if you have any suggestions or any comments 
please do comment or reach out to me on linkedin or instagram or wherever you want okay and let me know i'll try to implement any anything that you suggest apart from that i would surely suggest that you share my videos and subscribe to my channel while you're watching and stay tuned because i'm going to upload so many more interview experiences in the coming days so because it's still the placement season for the next couple of months at least so for the next couple of months you'll be getting continuous videos so please do subscribe and stay tuned and thank you all for watching